all this sports news, don't forget the prep football playoffs this weekend. Jeff Davis has this close-up report of one of the 5A finalists, Glenn Bard West. The Gold Helmet is an award that, that we give to outstanding football players at Glen Bard West High School. The Hitter Award is given in memory of Bruce Capel, a Glen Bard West athlete who played center on the 1963 Illinois Rose Bowl team and was killed in 1966 in Vietnam. It's become the object of honor for every hilltopper to attain the gold helmet. Well, what he has to do is he has to satisfy the head coach, and that's me, that he will be a hitter the rest of his life. Bill Duchon coach teams have won 106 games since he took charge of a mediocre program in 1960, dominating the tough West Suburban right, Conference since then. Now, this year, they advance to the 5A championship against St. Lawrence this Saturday at Normal. I'd just like to remind you at this time that you're playing for the championship of the state of Illinois. Let's have a real good practice. Everybody hustle, everybody move. Duchon's team right, is go. mentally prepared and in the spirit of the designation, ready to hit. Seven players wear the hitter's gold. They and their Glenbard West teammates will have to do plenty of that to become state champions Saturday night. From Glen Ellen, Jeff Davis, News Center 5. Hi, I'm Vince Lloyd speaking to you from Tournament Central atop Hancock Stadium at Illinois State University in Normal, Illinois, and you'll meet my associates shortly. Well, this marks the third year the Illinois High School Association has conducted statewide football tournaments. And we'll be bringing you all of the action in the one remaining game to be played here tonight. Based on student body size, there are five different classes in IHSA football tournaments. All told, more than 500 teams participated in the playoffs. Along with that large entrance, champions from 66 football conferences began the five class playoffs following the ninth week of regular season play this fall. Conference affiliation and the average size of the student bodies within a league or conference determines the class a school plays in. To arrive at the average conference enrollment, the largest and the smallest schools in the league are discounted, and then the average student body size of the remaining schools in the conference determines the class into which any given school is assigned. And with us to assist in our coverage is Floyd Brown. How about an update, Floyd? Okay, Vince, thank you very much. To get a fix on where things stand, let's take a look at yesterday's scoring. In the first game, Hampshire defeated Triophia of Concord yesterday, 47 to 6. This one decided the Class 1A tournament championship among schools with an average student enrollment of less than 295. Class 2A competition is made up of schools with average student bodies between 295 and 543. In our second game Friday, the crown went to Fulton over Gillespie, eight to nothing in overtime. The 3A statewide honors went to Darnell of Geneseo when they downed Metamora, 20 to 12. The 3A class comes from schools with an average student enrollment between 544 and 1,132. So much for the Friday play. The third member of our coverage team is Rick Talley, and he'll tell you about Saturday's play thus far and the game yet to come. Rick? All right, Frank Floyd, thank you. And over in that game we covered this afternoon, it was Joliet Catholic defeating Danville for the Class 4A championship. The score, 16 to 8. Now, this class embraces schools with an average student enrollment between 1,139 and 2,066. And tonight, we'll have the fifth championship game in this series coming up between St. Lawrence of Burbank and Glenbard West of Glen Ellen. This is for the Class 5A championship. All of the schools that competed in the 5A class have an average student body of more than 2,142. So the next and final game in our 1976 championship series will determine who will take home the class 5A state high school crown. So let's take a closer look at these competing teams. Glenbard West is from suburban Glen Allen, a suburb of Chicago, city population 25,000, student enrollment 2,109. Nickname, the Hilltoppers. This is an outstanding football team, 11 out of 12 victories this season, but it is going to be the underdog tonight. This is a basic fundamental team. The coach, Bill Duchon, likes to rely on the power sweep. He has, he has won most of his games this year with power football. They may have to go a little wide tonight with uh, halfback John Odom to try to get outside that outstanding St. Lawrence defense. But Duchon says he will not get tricky in this game. They will try to concentrate on the very things that brought him to this state championship game, and that's sound, fundamental power football. Pat Kelleher, the fullback, all-conference for two years, should be the leading ball carrier for Glenbard West. 
And if you notice those unusual helmets when we get into the contest, some are gold. Those are worn by special players who have achieved this year. They are members of the Hitters Club, and they're going to have their jobs cut out for them tonight against St. Lawrence. What about St. Lawrence, Floyd? Speaking of Hitters Club, <laughs> all of them should be wearing them That's because right. they are really a tough team. St. Lawrence is in Burbank, Illinois, some 15 miles south of Chicago. The city population, 29,448. They have a school enrollment of 1,691 all boys. Their nickname, the Vikings. The St. Lawrence team is coached by Tom Cavanaugh. This is his seventh year over there. He has a record of 61 wins, 16 losses, and five ties. The Vikings have allowed only five touchdowns all year, and they are unscored upon in the playoffs. Opposing coaches have said there are no weaknesses in this team. They're big. Their defensive line averages 206 pounds. Their interior offensive line averages 213 pounds. And a fellow by the name of Antonacci weighs 245 pounds. He's going to be an offensive right guard, and you can expect him to run over that position. Their defense is led by their nose guard, Jerry Barnacle, and linebacker Bill Bear. Bear, a 5'10", 212-pound senior, averages 12 tackles and 16 assists per game. The Vikings use a 5-2 angle defense. Their offense is led by quarterback Neil Rook, number 20, who rushed for over 900 yards and has 1,400 yards total offense. The Dave Hickey, their starting fullback, will not play tonight. However, he's been replaced by Ernie Wolf in the last couple of games, and as a result, they still have been very strong. Wolf gained over 100 yards in their semifinal playoffs. So there you have the St. Lawrence Ball Club. It's going to be an interesting, hard-fought, tough game. Good offense, very strong defense. Game time is coming up, and we'll be bringing you the opening lineups for tonight's contest in just a couple of minutes. But right now, let's go over to Rick Talley to cover the coin toss. Rick? Thank you, Floyd. We have the uh, replay here of the coin toss, which was just uh, held moments earlier. The coin is in the air. The players from St. Lawrence out there, Jerry Barnacle, number 52, number 20, Neil Rourke. St. Lawrence wins the toss. That Glenbard, play, uh, Glenbard player out there is Steve Powell representing the Hilltoppers. St. Lawrence will receive, will defend the south goal. So St. Lawrence will go on the offense when this contest gets underway. Now, these are the officials tonight. Lee Muir from Antioch, Illinois. Jim Righeimer from Lincolnshire, Chuck Esposito from Des Plaines, and Norm Erickson from Libertyville. We'll have the starting lineups and opening kickoff for you shortly, but first, here is the national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, the band's hearts will provide the music for the national anthem. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please stand and sing the national anthem. One rather interesting note here tonight, and the St. Lawrence team, and you'll see this guy, I'm sure, involved in many plays defensively, Bill Bear, number 51, a middle guard. He may drop into a linebacker spot, but most of the time they play a five-man defensive front. But the interesting thing about Mr. Bear, who's a senior, not only is he an outstanding football player, but one of the coaches who keeps a selective close eye on him is his brother, John who is a member of the coaching staff at St. Lawrence. That's hardly fair. Yes. 
Well, I'll tell you, Vince, once... Little, little brother doesn't behave. Big brother, the coach, may really get on him. <laughs> well, it's too bad your brother wasn't an announcer, you know? He could have kept an eye on you. It would have helped, I'll tell you. But <laughs> well, he went straight. One thing that people can't see on television, Vince, but uh, sometimes it's a good thing they can't feel it, is how cold it is here tonight on the field. Now, we yeah. shouldn't complain because we're relatively protected up here. But it's about... What was it? It's 11 degrees now. We can see on the clock across the way here in Normal, Illinois. And that wind is blowing from the northwest about 10 to 15 miles per hour. A crosswind across the field. It's bitter on the field. And uh, it's going to be remarkable if these people can hold on to that football tonight. Yeah, as the game goes along, it's going to get tougher and tougher for them. One thing about uh, St. Lawrence particularly, they will run pretty much from the same formation of wishbone. And I would suspect that if they pass, it will be only because somebody made a terrible mistake. If they will pass more than five or six times in an average ball game, that means they're getting uh, very careless with that ball. They're just putting it up in the air more than they want to. But what, have we, what we've noticed in uh, a couple of the contests leading into this one tonight is that even the power teams, the teams that ran the basic football and kept the ball on the ground, also suffered because of the conditions because that's right uh, a lot of the people on defense are tackling uh, tackling the ball tackling around the arms and, and hitting hard and when it's so cold and you know they're yeah. going to be hitting hard tonight with these two teams for the state championship it's just very difficult to keep the ball uh, from falling out of your hands and the more you carry that ball and you may see for example <laughs> number 31 John Ewald for St. Lawrence his quarterback number 20 Neil Rourke you may see them carrying that ball just constantly and as the game goes on they get tired and they're not holding onto that ball quite as hard or quite as uh, with quite as good a grip as they did in the early going. And that can lead to fumbles, not just for St. Lawrence, of course, but for Glenbard West, too. And that despite the fact that both of these teams are strong, they're solid, and they have excellent coaching. I look for, a, for an outstanding football game here tonight. Well, if it can match the game we saw this afternoon in the Class 4A class between Joliet yeah. Catholic. I mean, it was just a, a, and Danville, it was an outstanding game, 16 just to 8. Super game. And it's, uh, and they played under tough conditions. Yeah. And, and these, and it's gotten colder. It's dropped about five degrees since that contest. And so I know that it's going to be rough on these guys. St. Lawrence, of course, is going to be wearing the dark green jerseys. They are the home team here. So designated because of the bracket that they're in. And uh, Glenn Bard West will be in the white jerseys. And we're just about ready for the official introductory lineups here to the crowd and the size of this crowd naturally has been held down just because of the uh, very very cold weather. Now here is Floyd Brown to bring us the opening lineups. Thank you very much Vince. And now the opening lineups for tonight's football game for the class 5A state championship. First in the white the offensive team for St. Lawrence. At left end, number 86, Steve Earl. At left tackle, number 72, Joe Tudesco. At left guard, number 50, Scott Hoffman. At center, number 55, Peter Grogan. At right guard, number 74, Rich Antonacci. At right tackle, number 71, Joe DeParis. At right end, number 26, Craig Zerbel. The quarterback, number 20, Neil Rourke. At halfback, Number 31, John Ewald. Number 21, at halfback, Sean Carroll. Number 32, fullback, Ernie Wolf. And the coach for St. Lawrence, Tom Cavanaugh. for Glen Ellen, Glen Bard West in the dark uniform. Starting at left end, number 87, Chris Corrales. At left tackle, number 75, Chuck Bureau. At right tackle, number 77, Matt Campillo. 
At right in, number 50, Steve Pals. Linebacker, number 65, Andy Swingross. At left guard, number 72, Joe Atria. At right guard, number 64, Mark Zankner. Defensive bat, number 23, Jim Phillips. Defensive back, number 42, Kyle Mulberg. At strong safety, number 63, C.J. Oxley. And the free safety, number 20, Al Smith. And the coach for Glenn Bard West, Bill Dushan. And now to bring you the exciting play-by-play -play of tonight's 5A championship action, here again, Vince Lloyd. Hi, thank you, Floyd. And uh, let me straighten it out. It is St. Lawrence in the white jerseys, not the way I gave it to you prior to Floyd's giving you the individual announcement. You had a 50-50 chance. Yep. <laughs> That's never been good enough, Rick. <laughs> you and I have about the same odds, I guess, it's, I guess. <laughs> we still have that wind blowing pretty much across from uh, west to east. It's about, oh, I guess about 18 miles an hour. No, the wind no. chill, it's about 15 miles an hour, but we 15? just got, we yep. checked with the uh, WGN uh, weather experts back in Chicago and, and gave them the combination of the wind and the temperature, and they tell us that the wind chill factor here at Normal is minus 18 tonight. That isn't bad. No, it's not bad, it's not good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, there's Joe Cornell on the field. He, he, he might get arrested. He might he get arrested. Like he's ready for his tag team wrestling match yeah, in that uh, outfit. And you know, it's too bad those guys. Those guys don't get paid overtime either. <laughs> I asked him if he got hazard pay down there. He says not at all. Pete Cartwright, a junior, number 51, coming forward for the kickoff. John Ewald and Craig Zerbell are deep, and it is taken at about the 20-yard line by Craig Zerbell up to the 30 to about the 33. And you can tell that both of these teams are fired up. The tackle made by Jim Phillips, number 23, a senior. For Glenbard West, it is first and 10 for the Vikings of St. Lawrence at their own 33-yard line. Their center will be Pete Grogan, number 55, 6'4", 212, a junior. He's up over that ball directly behind him, co-captain Neil Rock, number 20, as they go from the wishbone. And the handoff goes to Johnny Wall, the good running back, straight ahead up to about the 35. Ran into Mark Campillo, number 77, 190 pound junior, who may be up on that defensive line, or he may drop back a step or two as an outside linebacker. They have some big guys up there. Bureau, number 75 defensively, 225. Second down and seven to pick up a three. Again, they go from the wishbone. With the flanker wide to the left side, and he runs that wishbone option well. There's a the pitch out, fumbled, and lost. Picked up by number 65 originally. Did he hold on to it? It is Glenbard West football. That's Andy Swingross, a senior linebacker. Well, you can see that he waited too long before he made the pitch out to Johnny Ewald, and that, I think, set up the fumble. Never did really have possession. That's Jimmy Phillips, number 23. This is the man who recovered the fumble. You know, Vince, I think that the triple option, uh, while it's a magnificent offense, they may have difficulty tonight unless they execute they it perfectly with this kind of weather. Timing was a little bit off. That's Johnny Odom, the halfback, number 22 on the first carry, and he gets it just across the 30-yard line where it's going to be second down and eight, a pickup of two. No score. We're just underway in the state class 5A championship football game. Lenbard West Hilltoppers up to the line of scrimmage. Their center is Matt Spears, 195. Keith Jasky, the quarterback, number 12, and here's a pitch to the running back coming around the right side, has a blocker in front of him, and he gets it down to about the 25-yard line before he is knocked down. Leading the blocking, Andy Swengross, who just a moment ago was involved in the fumble. Mike Kennedy, a strong side safety, number 24, and Tim Reed, the cornerback. A senior, number 41, into the stop. It is third and four. Third and four at the 25. Have a wing back on the right side. Play coming over to the right, and this is Gallagher. His first carry, advancing the ball down 
to the St. Lawrence 22 yard line. Mike Tops, number 76, in on the stop that time. Take a look at him. He's 225 pounds, a defensive tackle. Stopping number 32, Pat Kelleher. Pat all conference for a couple of years. Fourth down at about a yard. Fourth and a yard. Glenbard West in possession of the football. And a slant. He got it. Hard to the right side. He Mark Ingalls carrying that time. Here he is, number 30, a junior, 5'8", 180. He can drive. These kids are really firing off that bar of that ball from Glenn Bard West. Uh, they seem to really be fired up here, and they're taking it to them. Remember, St. Lawrence has shut out eight opponents this year. One of the toughest defensive high school teams you'll ever see. First and ten at the 20. Sweep on the right side. Good power. And finally, ridden out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. Here's Johnny Odom, number 22, the ball carrier, number one scorer for the ball club, and he gained over 1,000 yards this year, six-footer, 170 a senior. He has been playing with a bad back, but it sure seems to be okay tonight. The stop was made by number 11 for St. Lawrence, free safety, Tom Martinez, sure a seems senior. To, seems to be a big 170, doesn't he? He sure is. He's very fast. At the nine-yard line, and the drive carries down to just about the five with Mark Ingold carrying, running into number 86, Steve Earl of St. Lawrence. Well, they haven't gone to the left side of the line yet. They ran almost everything to the right side. They're sweeped with the quarterback, the sweep with the running back, then with Odom wide. Then they finally came back to the middle here, Vince. Yeah. Second down at the five-yard line. Second and five. Then Bard West trying to carry it in. Driving slant to the right side, and he's dug on near to inside that goal line. Well, that's Stopped at about the one. That's where they based their attack, on the left side of the St. Lawrence line. That Going to the right. Johnny Odom carrying number 22. Stopped by Martinez. This has been their bread and butter all year, the power sweep. Straight power to the right. Quarterback Keith Jasky throws a pretty good block in there. Mm -hmm. It always Along helps. Sven Gross. Third down at a yard away. Runs into a mountain of flesh. Nowhere to go there. Mark in goal number 30, the ball carrier that time. Fourth down and still a yard away. That's the first time they were able to stop them with no gain since they got their hands on the football. Absolutely cold. They may not get through this line. They may have to find a way to get a little bit around it, Vince. That's a big defensive line. It is. They average 219 pounds on the defensive mm. line there. And Look at Antonacci in there. Number 74. He plays offense, but he plays here on defense. Yeah, he weighs 240. They've got everybody in there. Brought him in on the goal line. <clears throat> He's got it. Quarterback got keeper. It. And that's this a penalty. Jasky. There's a flag. Let's see if they were offside. Jasky on the quarterback keeper. Number 12 went in. Take a look here. See that movement? Number uh, 75, Euro. See there? That's Chuck Biro. Well, that's a costly penalty because yeah. uh, five yards. That hurts. In that territory. Mm -hmm. Now it is fourth and six. Are they going to have a try for a field goal? Let's see. And it was really something the way the center of the offensive line for Glenbard moved out the goal line defense and allowed them to get in for the touchdown. That was just good straight ahead blocking. Chuck Biro apparently is going to try for this point after. There's a snap, a good one. Here's a kick. It looks good. It is. Three to nothing on a field goal by Chuck Biro, who had come out of the lineup over the sideline. And he was sent back in there. The holder was Fred Elmore. Take a look at it. Huh? We will when we come back. Seven minutes, 18 seconds left to play in the first quarter. The score now, St. Lawrence nothing and Glenbard West three. And our coverage of the State High School Football Championship will continue after this. I want to correct my slip of the tongue on that field goal by Chuck Biro who did the uh, booting on it after starting uh, off to the sideline, was sent back in. He was not listed initially as a guy who would boot either points after or field goal tries. Pete Cartwright, number 51, for the kickoff, 
here for Glenbard West. Your ball and Ewall deep. Not a very deep yep. kick. Nope. Picked up by Johnny Ewall. Look out. He can break it, and he's up to the 35 and runs into a very good tackle at the 35-yard line. Johnny Ewald on a good return. Here it is again. Well, he doesn't get much depth on it, Vince, no. and uh, as Bash Nagel with the Bears would tell you, the best thing to do when you get a ball like this is go straight up the middle and try to get the proper yardage, and he almost slips past this tackler. Was not able to get his good footing, I think, for the cut that he wanted to make there. But they've got it to 37-yard line. St. Lawrence trailing by three points. There's a box step play, and that's going to result in about, well, maybe no gain, maybe a bit of a loss. Neil Rourke had to hold on to it, brought down by Steve Pals, number 50. Well, I think the back that was supposed to be, uh, receive the ball slipped when he made yeah. his initial charge, and there was no place to hand it. St. Lawrence was out here for an awfully long time in pregame drills, trying to get uh, used to this footing out here because you've had rain, now you've got freezing weather, and you've got some icy spots out there. From the wishboat again. Second man, and that is Johnny Ewald. And it's slapped to the right side. He gets it out to perhaps the 40-yard line. But there'll be an offside penalty against Glenbard West. He dropped the flag after the man made the movement. I don't think he got back across the line. Joe Atria, number 72, a 218-pound guard up there in the tackle. Illegal procedure is called against Glenbard West. He was still in that uh, no man's land yeah, when that know. snap came off. You know, the people might notice those different colored helmets, as we mentioned before the show, Vince, uh, on the Glenbard team. Some are gold, some are white with stars, and those gold helmets are special awards uh, given by the coach for players who have just distinguished themselves at their positions. That's pretty good. And they've got a lot of gold helmets, too. Yes, they have. <laughs> wishbone again. Front man of that uh, wishbone. Yep, man. Ewald taking it. Campillo stopping him across the 45. Sixty five there in the dark Ugh. is Andy Swingoros and sixty five trying to get him out of there is Dan Jacobson or seventy four. I mean I is, imagine they'll have a few confrontations before the evening is over third and one on the keeper. Here's Neil Rourke a good ball carrier good option runner and he's got it across the 50 yard line into Glenbard territory. Well that's the that's the execution on the triple option you fake to the first man and he kept. Rourke, 5'11", 190 pounder, brought down by the strong side safety, C.J. Oxley. Took it right out of his stomach, brought it back, and carried it forward. Runs it very well. Of course, the third part of that option is to swing on out and pitch to the halfback. Yeah. They send Gorka wide to the left side in the wishbone, but they'll rarely pass. And carrying is Ernie Wolf, the up man. Gets it down to about the 45-yard line before running in to Andy Swengross. Here are some of the folks out here who are fortunately dressed for the cold weather. Mm, if is. that's possible when it <laughs> says cold. Craig Zerbell just joining the St. Lawrence huddle is number 26, a halfback. And they split him out wide to the left side. Neil Rourke gives it up there to that up man, Ernie Wolf. And he gets it across the 45 to perhaps a 44-yard line. It is going to be third down and perhaps five or six. Here's another look at some of that line play. That's where this game will be won or lost, Vince. Big hitters in there. He almost lost the snap. The ball almost got away yeah. from him before he slipped it to the fullback. It'll be a little tough on those centers right now, too. <laughs> Not only have to worry about that guy right across the line from him, but also getting a good grip and making okay. a good snap. Dorka out to the right side this time, the short side of the field. Third down and about five. And a mix up there and a loss. That's Ernie Wolf being pinned way back by C.J. Oxley, who came charging in hard. Nobody stopped him. Number 63 is Oxley. Here he is. Well, C.J. Uh, got into that backfield almost as quickly as the ball did. Yep. Here he is. Beautiful penetration by Oxley. That's a big man to move backward. Fourth down and eight yards to go. So we'll have the first punt of the night by St. Lawrence. And deep is John Kelleher, number 83 for Glenbard West. Tom Bryant back to do the putting at a very high snap. Does get it away, but it is blocked and recovered and lost again and now picked up by Glenbard West. And who's going to wind up with it? 
the 39-yard line of St. Lawrence. Finally pulled the crowd by Chris Corrales, number 87, a senior. Here's the block of it. Actually, he made a great save. He sure did. Keep it from going over his head, but Corrales Almost got saved there. It. Corrales got there. So, great opportunity for Glen Bard West to score. St. Lawrence nothing, Glen Bard West three, and our coverage of the State High School Football Championships will continue right after this. We'll take a uh, re-look here at the uh, block punt. That's uh, number 87, Corrales, coming in, a 5'11", 180-pound senior to block it cleanly. And now you've got a loose football. Out of the hands of one man. You gonna get it? No, not quite. Couldn't find the handle. Not quite sure yet who it was that recovered it. I know he had a green shirt on. Yep. First and 10 at the 38-yard line of St. Lawrence. Lenbard West leading 3-0, and that one is going to lose a little yardage. Bill Bear, middle guard, came busting through and nailed Johnny Odom for a loss. Lost about four yards. Second and 14. A very, and Bear is limping now. He is limping and leaving the field. Number 51, the 212-pound senior. And I think they've had to take a time. No, it's a, is it an official's timeout? Now Bear is obviously in pain. I don't know whether. I think he is going to leave, and I believe Rich Antonacci, who normally plays only on offense, is going to replace him. Yep. Antonacci, number 74, is into the lineup. Well, Bear, of course, is one of their top players. One of the top players in the state, for that matter. Yes. Second and 14 from the 42. Unbalanced line, strong to the right side. Way going the opposite side, a keeper by the quarterback, Jasky, and he can find no daylight. Can't out sprint him. Maybe picked up a yard, maybe not. Pete Stanish, linebacker on that side, and Steve Earl in there defensively for St. Lawrence. No gain, third and 14. Let's see if they might go to the air. Well, I think they had hoped uh, to, to begin a little play action to the right and try to get a little flow against it and go back the other way. It's the first time they've even tried any plays to the left. Yeah. Ingold right. has come in to replace Gallagher. And Corrales, Chris Corrales, has come in, I believe, replacing Detmer. That's a very impressive defense, St. Lawrence says. Unbalanced line, strong to the right side. He's going to try to put it up. Now he runs, and he's got the yardie. Mm -hmm. There is first and ten, and he's still going. Down to the ten. Is he... He's out of bounds at about the two-yard line. Keith Jasky rolling to the right was going to pass, and as soon as St. Lawrence went into that pass coverage, he took off. A beautiful run. Well, you see that kind of a play on Sunday afternoon in the National Football League. He knifed right through the middle. Referee is the only guy who had a good shot at him, or the backfield judge. Keith Jasky. Finally knocked out of bounds at the last moment by Jim Ramirezma. Number 42. There's Jasky. Well, this is a golden chance for him to get a touchdown now, Vince. Two yards away. Here's the pitch. Drive hard to the right side, and he ran right into Kevin Basic. Who knows the basics of football, I guarantee you. That's Pat Kelleher, the ball carrier. Here's the student body right. Look at Jasic, number 92. Not only contained the play, but he made a good tackle. He's a 195-pounder. Dan Burtis has now come into the backfield for Glen Bard West Hilltoppers. Out of there is Len Spalding, number 40. Burtis, number 33. Second down. They're still two yards away. He's got it. He's got it this time. A touchdown. Flag. But a flag has been dropped at the line of scrimmage. I think Mark Ingold started just to count too soon on that. We'll have to wait. We'll have to have the replay. He's the man that got the ball and scored the touchdown. I think it's going to be called back. We'll have to wait and see. It is. I think. Illegal procedure. He started too soon. He was so anxious they called his signal. Yeah. That's disheartening. So it is going to be second down and seven. But you have to be impressed with this Glen Bard West offense. Unbalanced line, strong to the right side. And Mark Indol, wrapping both arms around that football, plants it down at about the four-yard line. 
Here he comes. In goal, 5'8 and 180. You think there isn't some hitting in there? Excellent blocking in front of him. They're really moving him out. They just can't seem to get everybody. It's so many of them. The coaches have remarked earlier in the year, they say everything you try that you think will work against the St. Lawrence team just doesn't work. They adjust to everything so readily. They got Detmer split wide to the right side. Looking oh. nice. They're running and going to go in. Oh. He is in for a touchdown. Keith Kresge from four yards out. Had a shot at him, but slipped on that icy turf at the goal line and was not able to change directions when Jasky changed his direction. Straightened up, looking for a receiver, didn't see him, and then saw the daylight. Holding here is Elmore, and drive for the point after is Phil Smith, a soccer style kicker. And a flag goes up, the illegal procedure called against uh, St. Lawrence Vikings. Now let's see if the Hilltoppers change strategy and go after a two-pointer here. Well, they are. Dushan sending yep. in a whole platoon of new players. High school uh, ball, of course. If you could run that ball in or get it in there with a pass for the point after try, then you get two points. They lead here three to nothing or ten to uh, I get it right. It's nine fine. to nothing and they're going to try for eleven. Slat off the right side by Ingold, and no indication that he made it. He did not. So it stays. Nine to nothing. Let's take a look at uh, Jasky's touchdown run from four yards out. Well, just uh, basic instinct on his part, Vince. He can't find a receiver open. He sees the opening to the left, makes the movement, and Ramirez but almost has a shot at him. You see him slipped at the yeah. goal, number 42, yeah. and he was unable to reach back and trip him. If I can recap that for you, St. Uh, St. Lawrence turned the ball over. They got it on the 38 on a block punt, lost yards. Uh, however, Keith Jasky took it off from his own 42 and ran it 40 yards to the St. Lawrence 2 on another keeper play. Then Keith Jasky ran it in four yards for the touchdown. Mr. Jasky, the point after the touchdown, no good. The score remains 9 to nothing at this point. Mm. The Both. first time any team has scored against this club in a long while. In their last game of the regular season, Brother Rice got seven points against him, but they shut out uh, Glenbrook North in the playoff. They shut out Willowbrook, and they shut out Nutria East. Well, there's no shutout tonight. Nope. Nine to nothing. Pete Cartwright has teed it up at the 40-yard line here at the north end of the field. We only have five seconds left to play in the first quarter of the 5A championship game. Cartwright's kick going to be picked up at about the 16-yard line. To the 28, 25, and the 30. And stop just shy of the 35-yard line. Craig Zerbell, a sophomore, is only 160-pounder. There's the horn, and that's the end of the first quarter. St. Lawrence nothing, Glenbard West nine. Our coverage of the state high school football championships will continue right after this. You know, on the kickoff there, we can probably point out more on special teams here than with some of the smaller schools. Yeah. A young man by the name of Dan Burtis, number 33 for the Glen Ellen Glenbard West uh, team, went into that wedge head first and just broke it open there, and they were coming. Dave Lawrence in possession. He fakes the give and on the keeper. He gets it up to about the 38 yard line. Neil Rock, the co captain and quarterback. And he is stopped by uh, Andy Swingross. I have to like the way Rourke handles that ball, Vince. Uh, very confident ball handler. Yeah. And a uh, very good execution of the fake. That's pretty good size, too, for a mm. high school quarterback, 190 pounder. They list him at 5'11. He looks a little bit taller than that. How much does he pass? Maybe six, seven times a ball game, that's all. Tucks it in the midsection of Ernie Wolf, and he is nailed right at the 40 yard line by number 77, Matt Campeel for Glenbard West. Well, the question now, gentlemen, is uh, down nine to nothing, even though it's very early in the second quarter, is uh, do you, can you effectively play catch up football with a triple option offense? Particularly well, in the they've got like time this? if they can grind it out, and avoid fumbles. Well, it's difficult to avoid fumbles yeah. in conditions like this. That's the problem. They must keep uh, on, on hold of the football. Just a slight. The hands are cold. Yeah, miscalculation on a pitch and you're in trouble. Strong to the left side. 
Flipped it out at the last moment. Had a good pitch out and a good run. Down the left side comes Johnny Ewald, and he can fly. It was a perfect pitch. Absolutely excellent execution that time and that option. Fake to give, dear and Ewald. Then pitched out at the last moment. Perfect timing. There's the fake, and here's the pitch to Ewald. And he can turn it on. 155-pounder, a junior. Ewald only 5'8". He's finally brought down by the free safety Al Smith his footing seemed to be very good on that too he can move they have Gorka split to the right side and the give goes to Ernie Wolf he picks up about uh, three yards or so someone might be wondering about the shoes that these young men wear thinking of high school how could they have enough shoes to adjust to different playing fields but they have a shoe bank here at Illinois State they must have it when they have the artificial turf so they can change here if necessary if they find they need uh, no cleats and the tennis shoes can you go in there and get sport coats and socks and not really and things? <laughs> or money speaking uh -huh. of banks your bell wide to the right side and in motion is Sean Carroll to the right on balance line and a drive into the line by Ernie Wolf. He gets it to about the 35-yard line. I went in and got a handkerchief, though. <laughs> they gave me a nice <laughs> shirt from the athletic department. Here is uh, Andy Swingross, number 65. Good linebacker. Him fight off the block. Gets his shoulder in there and barrels right into that ball carrier. 200-pounder. Whoop, a little mix-up. The Paris had lined up on the wrong side. Now he comes back to the right side. And the play going to the left. They cannot drive Steve Pals out of that defensive formation. He mm. stayed right in there. Very fine play by number 50, Steve Pals. There he is, 6 to 205, a junior. It's just like wrestling a steer to the ground or something. He rode him down, didn't mm. he? No, it is fourth down and six. And St. Lawrence is going to have to cough up the football. It is nine to nothing in favor of Glenbard West. Coach Bill Duchon has his team out in front battling for the 5A championship. I don't know whether they'll kick or not here. Kelle <laughs> oh, they will. Kelleher is deep. A nice high kick going to the sideline. Picked up by Kelleher, and he is immediately out of bounds at about the eight or nine yard line. Knocked down by Steve Earl, number 86. In the second quarter, the score is still St. Lawrence, nothing, Glenbard West died, and our coverage will continue after this. <laughs> Quarterback Keith Jasky has his uh, hands folded under his uh, arms, trying to keep those uh, fingers warm. Here they come up to the huddle. Matt Spears, the center, leading him up there. And strong to the right side. And he gives to Mark Ingold in there at the uh, fullback spot. And he has run rather well. Gets it across the 10 to the 11. Didn't pick up much on it. And this is Chris Corrales who comes sprinting in. He's uh, listed as an end. They're strong to the right side in that uh, line right now. But the play coming this way. Nowhere to go. St. Lawrence really converging on Johnny Odom. Steve Earl, number 86. And Dave uh, Michalszewski, number 75. In there in the stop for the Vikings of St. Lawrence. Steve Pals, number 50. Listed as a setter, comes in. And out comes he, uh, Chris Corrales. This was Kelleher injured in this contest earlier that you noticed at all. All no, I did not notice. He's all conference two years in a row. Yeah. And Gold has played almost all the game at fullback. I did not see Kelleher go off with an injury. Sweep to the right side. This is Spalding, the ball carrier, and he gets out to about the 12 is all. He's a 180-pound junior. Here's linebacker Pete Stanish, number 66. Watch this play. There he moves. Yeah, there's Stanish moving along the line, following the play. Pow! <laughs> Hello there. After he hit him, he tried to take the football away. Mr. Stanish will be back next year. He's a 196-pounder. Burtis back to punt. Blocked. Picked up by St. Lawrence in the end zone. Touchdown. We see number 92. 
Kevin Basic. Here's the punt, Vince. It'll be interesting to see if we can find out who actually. Re There's the block punt, number 84 for. The ball is bounding around down underneath, and 84 is on top of him. We don't know who it was underneath him there. Number 84 for the Hilltoppers, Chad Walber. That's correct. Pete, uh, Pete Bureau. Pete Bureau. P U R O. Well, it looked like. 92 has been given the touchdown. That's Kevin Basic, the defensive end. He was the man underneath there on the ball, and the score is now 9 to 6. It sure didn't look like they set up very deep on that nope. punt. Tom Rye, the holder. Point after try is up, and it is perfect. By Matt Oscalunas, a senior. 6.41 left to play in the first half. And it's now St. Lawrence 7, Glenbard West 9. Our coverage of the State High School Football Championship will continue after this. Let's take another look at this, Vince. Uh, he prepares for the punt. It was a good snap. Perhaps he moved a little slowly. Maybe they weren't back far enough. But Pete Zero, number 84, got the block. And you can see number 92, Kevin Basic, hovering over it. Zero right on top of him, just in case there's any complication. That's a tough defensive club, isn't it? And they kick the extra point. Now we've got a 9-7 to seven football game. And here's the kickoff. Rick Salvino with the kick. And it is taken by Johnny Odom about the 11 to the 20. 25 and the 30. And look at Mr. Odom go. He can fly a 170 pounder. Very he, good interference. He has an uncanny ability to gain another four or five yards. Once he starts falling, he goes forward. Well, he, he followed his wedge very well. Now, if you'll see, as it, he veers just to the left, you can see the three blockers in front of him. <laughs> That's piggybacking. <laughs> Whatever. Well, they've got excellent field position now, Vince, on the 43. Let's see if they can roll. Lenbard West. Trailing now, or leading now, nine to seven. This is Odom. Well, you have to like Odom's quickness. He looks as if he may be the quickest player on the field. Good cut, and he seems to have excellent footing. His cuts are very good. Yeah. Picked up four yards, second down and six. Well, I thought this game would end up about nine to seven in some way. Uh -huh. We may be around the twenties for both teams if they keep, they keep it up like this. It is good. Went oh. back right side. Play coming this side. It's Odom again, running into a lot of trouble. Excellent lateral movement along the defensive line here for the Hilltoppers. Jim Ramirezma. Quarterback in on the stop number 42. Swingross tried to do some blocking, couldn't knock anybody down that time. Third and six. Ball at the 47 yard line of Glenbard West. Sweep to the right, Kelleher. Did not get the first down. Stopped at about the midfield stripe. Well, Johnny Odom threw a big block out there, but it wasn't big enough because yeah. the man he tried to knock out of the way just simply didn't leave the area. The ball carrier followed right in behind him. They send in the punting team. The stop that time made by Mike Kennedy. They had to replace the, their starting strong safety, Mike Constant, who was out of there because of a back injury. Dan Burtis is in the punt this time. Let's see if he can get this one away without it being blocked. And he's only about 10 yards back from the line of scrimmage. Tim Reed, deep man, and he gets it away. That was him. I think I'd back up a few more yards. Maybe he's got it right at the 20. Oh, and he's got coverage. some more at about the 23. <laughs> Corrales, number 87, and Steve Powell's on the stop. I'd like to remind the people that all the news plus highlights of the IHSA Championship football with Marty McNeely, Roger Treemstra, and our good buddy Lou Boudreau tonight at 10 o'clock right. right here on WGN Television 9. Lou Boudreau's in there tonight. All right. Get Four over. minutes and 12 seconds left to play in the first half. Nine to seven score. Glenn Bard West, St. Lawrence with the ball. Option. He becomes at a good pitch. Ewald trying to sweep, and he gets out of bounds at about the 36, 35 yard line is where it'll be marked. Kid can fly, can't he? Corrales driving him out of bounds. There's Johnny Ewald. 
Again, Vince, it's the execution. The pitch caught him in full stride, and he was able to turn the corner. It, it was You could see from the beginning he was not going to be able to turn the corner for a long game, but uh, he certainly got yardage enough. It is first and 10 at the 35-yard line. St. Lawrence Vikings in white in possession from the wishbone. With the left end. Here's Ewald again, struggling up to about the 40-yard line before he is driven back. Hit by Mark Zenker, number 64, and again, Chris Corrales. As Ewald's very quick, Vince. He really takes off when he gets the ball, and he showed us some speed on the outside on the option on the previous play. Perhaps we'll see a little bit more of him to the outside. 26, Craig Zerbell has come in, and they split him to the wide uh, side, the left side. On the option, good pitch to Ewald. Whoop. And he runs into a good hard stop by Steve Pals, and he is cut short of first down yardage, I believe. Pals played the option perfectly, Vince. Mm -hmm. He did not go for the quarterback fake. He stayed out wide in his position, and he was there when he got the ball. Third down at about a yard. There's the St. Lawrence coach, Tom Cavanaugh. A wonderful guy, isn't he? Pals weighs 205 pounds over there. He accepted the charge from Ewall and stopped him cold. Well, he had a, a strong player. He had a 50 pound advantage. <laughs> Big play, third and one. Oh, right. Get around and he's in there. Look at him go. Ernie Wolf, up man in that wishbone formation. As you'll see, the, the original hole isn't there, and he just brushes it aside and said, look out, fellas, I'm busy. Run to daylight, huh? That kid Pilo finally making the stop. It is first and 10. St. Lawrence on the Glenbard West, 46. On the keeper. He's got a lot of room. 30, 25. He may go all. Did he step out of bounds? Yes, he did. Stepped out way back at about the 23 or 24 yard line. Neil Rourke. Now Vince, we will see here that Powell's, the man that did so well earlier, is is victimized here by the fake. <laughs> see, there he is. He started to fake out. Yeah. Powell's went out to the halfback. He can still remember the tackle he made before, and and Rourke just kept the ball and came down the sideline, but steps out as you can see there. I and think they're nobody. Gonna, now they need help out there with him. Nine to seven the score. St. Lawrence trailing by two, but they have a drive going. He looked like he wanted to hand off to that up man Wolf, and he got right by him, so he just held on to it himself before he was stopped by Sinkner. He's taking his time trying to hit. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, yeah. there's probably what happened there. We had a player to fall down, uh, Ernie Wolf. Tough footing, a little busted play. Yeah. This drive started way back on the St. Lawrence 23, gentlemen, and here we are at the 22 down of Glen Ellen, Glen Bard West. Second down and nine yards to go. Uh -huh. Pitches it out. Beautiful run coming up by Ewald. Out of bounds at about the 16-yard line. Driven down by Al Smith, number 20. Here's the 155-pound halfback. This is John Ewald carrying the ball out to the right. Watch Wolf run him down there. Excellent uh, pursuit on his part, and he grabbed the back and rode him outside. I saw Sean Carroll, number 21, throw two blocks on that play. That's he threw one bad. block out in front of the sweep, knocked a man off his feet, got up and threw another block, a uh, man coming back. That's doing the job. Third down and two yards to go at the 15-yard line of Glenbard West. St. Lawrence with the ball. A minute 44 left in the half. They've got the first down and then some. That's Johnny Ewald. And Zenkner bringing him down, number 64, along with Kyle Moberg, number 42, a cornerback. Take a look at Ewald here. Good footwork. Yeah. No, I think that's Sean Carroll, isn't it? I can't tell. 21 or 31. Whether he gave it to the second man. Yeah. Anyway, it was a good move. Oh, he yeah. threw a fake there and carried it to the right and gave it down into first down situation with a minute 36 to go here. That's the whole object of the triple option. Who has it? Yeah, that's right. You know, if we don't know, you know they don't know. First and 10 at the 12-yard line. He's going to keep it? Yes. Great that defense. A good tackle. Andy Swengross bringing Rourke down that time. But you see, that's the kind of help that Powell's has to have out there because yeah. if that man doesn't come across, Powell's is stuck with the quarterback and the pitch-out man, and he's got to try to decide who to go for. 
What do they say? Like a one-eyed dog in oh, a meat market. Don't know tough. which way to turn. Huh? That's right. <laughs> hey, stop the clock here. Minute 12. Time right after this. Uh, about five or six players from each of these teams has committed himself to Northwestern already. Well, it wouldn't hurt him up there, I guarantee you. They got some guys that can play it. Second down, six yards to go at the eight-yard line, a minute and 12 seconds left in the half. He's going to keep it, and he's across the five. Campillo, number 77, making the stop on Neil Rourke. Runs that quarterback option beautifully. Senior, 5'11", 190. Pounding at the door, time is running, 50 seconds, and still counting. Third and one at the four. And a drive down to about the one-yard line. I don't think Ernie you can... Wolf stopped by Al Smith. Yep. I don't think you can get any closer. Timeout taken by St. Lawrence as they are just inches away from a touchdown that would give them the lead here in the closing seconds of the first half. 37 seconds showing on the clock here at uh, Hancock Stadium. Remember Interesting now? analogy, playing the percentages in professional football now, they would kick, an ex kick the, field, uh, the field goal to tie it up because that's just basic percentages. But in high school football, forget it. <laughs> you can anticipate them coming across the line with the ball. Well, they're in a pretty good spot. 37 seconds left and uh, first down and goal to go just inches away. They can run at least a couple of more plays, but the way they are driving, and they're getting some good charges out of Joe Tedesco up front there. He's 215, Scott Huffman 205, Pete Grogan 212, Rich Antonacci 245, number oh. 74 is, Joe DeParis 200. They're moving some guys out of there. You think some of those guys might play Big Ten football next year? Just about most of them. <laughs> <laughs> Here they come. First and goal, inches away. They got it. Donnie Wall driving in for the touchdown. With, and that took all of 44, or all of four seconds. Well, there's Ewald. Not really much opposition on this drive. Strong side drive. of the right line. Mm. <laughs> Looks like he does it every day. Yeah. He does. Good looking kid, didn't he? 155 pounder. They are leading 13 to 9 with the wishbone. Send a man in motion. Fakes a give. Now the pitch to Ewald. He's got it. Johnny Ewald in. And that makes it St. Lawrence 15 and Glenbard West 9. option can do if you do not fumble the ball. Rick Salvino's line drive kickoff. Backing up and taking it is Kelleher to the 20-25, the 30, Kelleher to the 40, and up to about the 40-41 yard line, maybe the 42 is where they're going to mark it. And he is stopped down there by number 84, Pete Zero. Well, certainly Kelleher doesn't look injured, so that answers our question. I think they've just kept in goal in the game for because yeah. they wanted him in their offense, but Kelleher Dances pretty well this time. He's a senior, 195 pounder. Now we have him in the lineup. Clock is running, about 10 seconds left to play. This should be the last play of the half. Jasky in the option to the right. Still on his feet. Still on his feet. Now he's out of bounds. Kennedy drove him out of bounds. So, St. Lawrence facing a 9 nothing. Let me tell you, you're seeing two real fine football teams here tonight, and St. Lawrence right now, extremely impressive, of course, because of the fact that they're able to come back after Chuck Bureau had uh, gotten the first points on the board tonight for Glenn Bard West with a 23-yard uh, field goal, number 75 for him, and uh, that gave him a three-point lead. Then they hit a block punt. Kevin Basic recovered there for a touchdown in the end zone. We've had a little bit of everything. And uh, Corrales had also blocked a punt in this game to make it first and 10 in the St. Lawrence 38 yard line and uh, a touchdown from four yards out with uh, Keith Jasky going in. You've got a couple of quarterbacks here tonight who know how to handle that football very very well and 
Each uh, backfield, along with that uh, good quarterbacking, has at least one good running back behind them. But, of course, the key to much of it is what they can do up front. And so far, St. Lawrence, I think, has dominated a bit because their line play, along with their back, uh, powerful backfield, I think has dominated just a bit. They have not gone to the air at all. Fumbles and penalties have been kept to a minimum, and that, of course, are also marks of well-disciplined football teams that know what they're doing out on that field. A little later in our halftime intermission, we'll have some videotape highlights of the first half, but right now, here is Rick Talley. Thank you, Vince. We uh, found one of those uh, poor little fellows out there shivering. We brought him in out of the cold. <laughs> had, to get, had to protect him a little bit. And with us is John Font, the athletic director and the coach from Northwestern University. And welcome, John, to our little cubby hole up here. And what do you think of the game? Excellent football game. Uh, the conditions are horrible, but uh, the football on the field is excellent. After the opening jitters, I think they've settled down to both playing. Do you think that football. had a lot to do with it, the jitters? Uh, I think so, yeah. I think the emotion involved and the fact that, you know, they sat around all day long, you know, it, it's a long time to wait for, for a big ball game. And I think uh, it started, you know, not slowly, but uh, jitters and uh, some mistakes. And after that. John, what happened on that block punt? Now, d could you, did you have an opinion of what happened? It looked to me like uh, they weren't back as far as a team usually punts from. Well, What's that's the normal distance? Well, normally for us, uh, 13 to 14 yards. Some right. is and he was about nine and a half yards. And then the other, then when he went back to punt right after that, he lined up at nine and then moved back to about 12. Uh huh. So he was only back nine or 10 yards. Yeah. But maybe that's succeeded for them all year. And certainly that. I'm well, sure it could was... very well be. But uh, St. Lawrence stacked it up with eight men up front. And uh, you know, when you're back, your wall, your back is up against the uh, goalpost. You better get back a little bit more. Well, deeper. I don't want to. I don't want you to get you in trouble with anybody you might want to recruit on either team. Thank but, you. But uh, who do you think is going to win the game? Well, St. Lawrence has momentum now. Oh. You know, after uh, getting uh, zapped, uh, you know, for the field goal, and you know the little things have an effect uh, later on in the ball game. But uh, that uh, illegal procedure in the backfield that took away the first touchdown. Took away the touchdown. And uh, you know, it, it it could very well be a tie game right now. But I, you know, in in one respect, it's good that things evened out. The uh, the bad snap, the punt, you know, from St. Lawrence, it gave. Uh, uh, uh -huh. Lombard ball in great field position and then the block punt for uh, St. Lawrence. So that sort of evened itself out. Now they're both playing. All right, now let's change. I mean, with Michigan going against uh, Southern, Cal, uh, yeah. Southern Cal, I you could you could toss a coin in the air and take any one of the three as far as number one in the country. You mean you watched Pitt last night instead of watching Channel 9 in the high well, school I watched tournament? both. I watched yeah. both. I, Two different series. Huh? Okay. <laughs> Look, I wanted to see you in your yellow jacket. <laughs> All right, John Font. <laughs> Thanks for being with us and good luck in the future. Thanks, and, uh, Frank. One of our high school bands has now moved out onto the field, so let's take a look. Glenvard West, the director is Richard Rayer, graduate of Kent State. He has a master's from Northwestern, and Mr. Rayer handles all the arrangements for this band, both the music and the choreography. We have 80 students from Glenvard West participating in this band. And if you think those football players were cold, think about that flute player out there. Drum major Jason Miller, a junior from Glen Ellen. That's Jason. And those young ladies you see are in a unit called the Topperettes, the Pom Pom Squad. They perform in all the home games for Glenbard West. Captain Judy Ellerman, some of the other young ladies, Mary Sutton, Jean Raynard, and Aaron Clark, they're the choreographers for the squad. The Topperettes.
Lindbergh West, and now here's Floyd Brown at Tournament Central. Thank you, Rick. This is only the third year that the Illinois High School Association has crowned state champions in football. However, IHSA conducts state tournaments in many sports, including AA basketball. Here's a special report on it. We have a championship game very shortly. However, before play resumes, we want to show you the comparative stats tallied by the competing teams in the first half. In the first down situation, three first downs for Glenn Bard, eight first downs for St. Lawrence. Total yardage, 117 for St. Lawrence, 91 for Glenn Bard. Rushing yardage, 117, none of them by passes. 91 by Glenn Bard, none by passing. Uh, in the uh, next statistic that meant something, one fumble by St. Lawrence, and uh, they lost that fumble. No fumbles for Glenn Bard. Quite a turnaround as opposed to the other nights. Yard penalized, three penalties assessed against Glenn Bard for 15 yards, none against St. Lawrence. No pass interceptions, but look at the punt average, will you? Because of the block punts, two punts for a seven yard average for St. Lawrence, two points for 8.5 average for Glenn Bard. Now let's take a quick look at some videotape highlights of the first half. Well, there you see the first half, which ended with a score 15 to 9, St. Lawrence in the lead. An exciting first half, to say the least, and we can anticipate more of the same here. And here to tell you all about it is the incomparable, yeah. infallible. Yes. <laughs> You've got five more minutes for that. <laughs> <laughs> Fill in until the team well, gets the back on the field. <laughs> we just ran out of words. Vince Lloyd, yeah, that's what I was thinking about. But we have to start out with a little bit of an apology. Uh, and this happens invariably in, in games like this. There's always somebody who's going to be involved in a critical, crucial play. He'll be highlighted out there. And you've had uh, his number given to you by 16 different people from that school. And it turns out that at the last minute, somebody else put on his jersey. And you wind up with a guy that uh, you didn't even have on your on your spotting board or your maybe didn't even have on your scorecard. Go ahead and but apologize the fella, now. The fella who is number 84 for St. Lawrence is not Pete Zero, Z-U-R-O. Instead, he is a senior by the name of Paul Flerick, F-L-E-R-I-C-K, a 208-pounder. And we mention it because it was Paul Flerick, number 84, who you saw in the replay just a moment ago. There he is. Who blocked that punt. Hi, Paul. Hi, Paul. Hello, Paul. Uh, and to Pete Zero, wherever you are, that may have been the great athletic moment of your life. It was a moment of glory. <laughs> <laughs> and we might send you a copy of the videotape. <laughs> and to the parents of Pete Zero, congratulations. Yeah. Uh, but those things happen, but it was Paul Invariably. And it could turn out to be the biggest play of the game. Ben. Yeah, yeah. And we did want to uh, set the record straight on it. And you might see him in there from time to time also. Significant is the fact that the time had run out and nobody was on the field until they went to the dressing room and said, all right, guys, you got to come on back on there. I, I yeah. wouldn't come Look back the second out. half. Yeah. <laughs> well, St. Lawrence was ahead. They didn't, they didn't they have do. any reason to come back. <laughs> they're, the, they're, they're finally getting back out of the field now. We had uh, mentioned to you prior to the start of this game that uh, if there was a pass thrown by either uh, Neil Rourke or Keith Jasky, the respective quarterbacks, it might come out of strictly desperation. And so far, neither team has felt that desperate. Nobody has there been is, desperate enough. Not one pass has been thrown. Well, the and only one fumble, and that's important. Yeah, the wind chill factor is still down around 18 or 20 below zero. It's still on the first National Bank of Normal sign I see across the way, 11 degrees above. And so the it's nice of you to give them that plug after they cast your check today. Really? Well, that was... Did they really? <laughs> <laughs> he, on a Saturday he afternoon? He asked him to put a hold on it for one month. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if knew anyone was in the bank. The guy said that's a new funny kind of paper you've got on that check. It bounces. <laughs> <laughs> That's because he's in sports, he says. <laughs> well, we're coming down to the last half of the uh, final game of the five that we have enjoyed so much down here in the yesterday and today. And I'll say this, at every one of the games, including the lopsided one, the opener in which Hampshire was a big, big victor, every one of them has been really exciting. And the caliber of football that you see played by these high school players, I think, is tremendous. It certainly was. And then after Hampshire, we had championships won by Fulton, Geneseo, and then this afternoon, Joliet Catholic yeah. against Danville in the 4A title game. For many of these uh, young kids, of course, it is going to be the last football game they will ever play in. Many of them are not going to be able to go on to uh, college football. Uh, some are too small to play in a, uh, on a major college level, and uh, some are just going to wind up giving it up after tonight. 
I want to remind the people Vince there's drama and comedy on WGN presents tonight at 1030 when George C. Scott and Diana Riggs star in the hospital 1030 tonight on WGN television nine. Diana Riggs huh? right Gee, you knew her well. The hospital very good picture though and it is a comedy but it's a tragedy when you look at it from another direction. All right it is St. Lawrence and White that is going to be kicking off to Glen Bard West and the score is 15 to 9 in favor of the St. Lawrence Vikes and uh, slated to boot off is Rick Salvino number 23. Here he comes. Line drive shot right down the middle of the field it is taken by Johnny Odom. Odom to the 20 to the 25 to the 30 and gets across the 30 to about the 32 yard line. And he's brought down there by number 23. Here it is. There's the man with the quick feet. If they're going to get back into this contest it'll have to be someone like Odom on offense. He's the one that seems to carry their best chance Vince. Dalvino who did the kicking off made the tackle and it's first and ten for Glenn Bard West and the pitch going to Autumn trying to go to the right side running into a lot of opposition over there. Maybe they agree with you. Well he, he is quick and uh, he, he, he has shown uh, a knack for making that cut at the right time Floyd. He has, but the yes. St. Lawrence defense is not only big but but you know the pursuit is uh, <laughs> the lateral pursuit is unbelievable. Very well coached. Always too. two or three guys there. Very well coached. WGN television channel nine Chicago. It is second down and still ten yards to go. Motion to the right that's Kelleher. And to give again to Johnny Odom. He slipped. Yes. Got about to the 35. See, that's, line. The, that's the worst part of the field. Vince, yeah, very icy. You can see the glaze still on that part of the field. And unfortunately that's where they're running their sweep to the right side. Now let's see if they may try to come back here to where the footing is a little bit more secure. Number 33 coming in there for Glen Bart West is Dan Burtis a senior 511 and he is replacing Pat Kelleher in the fullback slot. Third down and eight yards to go from their own 34. Coming this side makes a nice cut back Odom does but not enough for first down yardage. But he milked that for just about all it's possible to get before Pete Stanish came in and uh, Bill Hinsberger number 73 along with Stanish on the stop. So it's a putting situation. Dan Burtis normally does their punting. Deep man is Tim Reed for St. Lawrence. He's standing on his own 35. Good snap from center and he gets it away from the 30 yard line. Reed wisely letting it bounce around and it will be down by Glenn Bard West at about the 32 yard line of St. Lawrence. In the third quarter the score St. Lawrence 15 Glenn Bard West 9 our coverage of the state high school football championship will continue <laughs> after this. It is now up to Glenn Bard West to try to stop this St. Lawrence ball club and see if they can't get their hands on that football again. Coming out of the huddle number 26 Craig Zerbell wide to the right side for the white clad Vikings. Wishbone again. Straight ahead on the drive. And that's a few yards Johnny Ewald number 31. Stopped by number 50 Steve Pals. Well he gets his share of tackles. Yes he does. Picked up about uh, two yards. Second down and eight. Ball at their 34. Gorka wide to the left side, the short side of the field. And he gives it to the up man. That is Ernie Wolf, the fullback. Gets it up to about the 40. Runs into number 64, Mark Senker. And that Campillo. Well, notice here that uh, Andy Svengross is, is double teamed uh, quite a bit yeah, uh, yeah. on defense. The poor guy's got two guys in his face all night, which is a show of respect, of course, but I'm sure he's not too happy about it. Third down and a long one, a short two. Second man in that uh, formation, or the uh, wishbone, and that's Ewald. He's got it. Well, Svengross got in on that tackle, tackle, but Wolf is strong like Bull. This is Johnny Ewald. Oh, it's Ewald. Yeah. Take the give that time mm -hmm. to Wolf. 
did him up. He drew a little attention. They're first and ten at the 48-yard line. St. Lawrence on a drive. Hit immediately that time was Ernie Wolf and Mark Zentner, defensive guard, in there to make the stop. Maybe got a yard. Still in St. Lawrence territory at about the 49-yard line. Greg Zerbell, number 26, has come in, and he is flanked wide to the left side as the Vikings come up to the line of scrimmage. Tied in to the right. On the option, makes his cut. Beautiful. Hurdles over one man, and he is in to about the 43-yard line. That's Neil Rourke. Looks like a first down, Vince. It looks like he may have gotten across. He did. Zechner in on the stop. Neil Rourke in the first half accounted for 44 yards rushing on eight carries, averaging almost, uh, well, about five and a half yards a carry. That's darn good. He ran for about 900 over the course of the season. That's a lot of yards for a quarterback. 5'11", 190-pound senior. Oh, well, you don't have to pass. <laughs> Gorka, wide receiver, split to the right side. Up man is the fullback, Ernie Wolf, and he's got it down to about the 40-yard line of Glenn Bard West. Zeichner, again, in on that stop. Gorka goes out, and they bring in uh, Zerbel. There's where the hitting is going on, Vince, right up front. It's mm. Max Hard. That's one of the gentlemen up there involved in all That's the hitting. Chuck Bureau. Chuck Bureau. Second down two, and two about six. Mm. Uh oh. Missed the handoff that time to Ernie Wolf, and he uh, had trouble getting the ball out of uh, Ernie's midsection and holding on to it himself. He got down to about the 38 yard line. Zachner and Powell's in the stop that time for Bill Deshaun's Glenbard West Club. Well, now we've got a third and what, about six? Looks like about that. Well, that's, this is an interesting play. Probably see that option again. Inside the 40. Yes. Keep your eye on Johnny Ewald, number 31, as Rourke tries that option. Oh, oh he didn't have time. Steve Powell's. An enemy this time, insofar as St. Lawrence is concerned, a great foul, however, for Glenn Bard West. Big, big loss. Where did he come from? He must blitz on this because he's normally lined up on the outside. He'll be on the, the right end spot or off at the tackle spot, depending on whether or not they yeah. drop uh, Campillo back as a linebacker or have him up at the line of scrimmage. He yeah. probably said, I'm going to catch him before they get me outside That's in right. a two on one situation. They have one man back in a single safety. They got to rush on, but they do not get the punt blocked on a beautiful high kick, bouncing uh, at the 10 and going into the end zone or out of bounds. I think they were fortunate enough that it went into the end yes, zone. Yes, sir. Tom Brya, beautiful punt. So it'll be first and 10 at the 20-yard line when play is resumed. In the third quarter, the score, St. Lawrence 15, Glen Bard West 9, and our coverage of the State High School Football Championships will continue after this. Well, we have some homecoming plans to announce here, uh, Vince, for Glen Bard West. At 2.30 tomorrow afternoon on Sunday, the team will be escorted by police and fire trucks through the town to the school. The whole town will be decorated for the return of the team. Village President Connie Zimmerman, Superintendent of School Dean Stokes, and the Principal Robert Elliott will be speaking at a pep rally at the school. That's tomorrow afternoon at 2.30 in Glenbard West. And the give goes to Spalding, the flanker man, trying to cut into the right side, and he is down right at that line of scrimmage by a very tough St. Lawrence blocking defense. No gain. Kevin Basic in there, Hinsberger in there on Glenn Spalding, 180-pound junior. Also, St. Lawrence has some homecoming plans, Vince. Tonight, not tomorrow, but tonight, a police escort all the way back from Normal to Burbank, a pep rally at the school, and then tomorrow a parade starting at 2 o'clock at City Hall. Motion to the right side, but the play carrying into the line. It's Mark Ingold, the fullback, number 30, carrying for a short gain. Hit by number 52, Jerry Barnacle, co-captain and good linebacker. So that's a review for the homecoming. Tonight, St. Lawrence people will have a police escort back, and they'll have a rally at school tonight, and then another one tomorrow. And also, Glenbard West at 2.30 tomorrow afternoon. That's on Sunday. They'll have a rally and a parade and all those speeches. On the, last down two plays, on the last two plays, Odom has gone in motion to the right. Nobody's following him. Let's see what happens. Third down to nine. Burtis has come back in, and the pitch goes to Odom. He's going to try the short side. No gain whatsoever. In fact, a loss. 
There is a very good indication of how tough that Viking defense can be. They had it first and 10 at the 20, and they wind up on fourth down. Have lost some uh, ground and an injured player down there. There may be a penalty against St. Lawrence that is going to be walked off right now. Glenbard West will retain possession. That looks like Mark Ingold. Glenbard West. That's who it is. A fullback running behind uh, Pat Kelleher. Well, that'll be a first down. Oh, yeah. What was the penalty indication? Probably a personal foul, although we don't know. I was looking down at Engold when they uh, walked off the penalty and apparently gave the sign already. I would think it uh, may have had something to do, although it, may, it, it oh. doesn't necessarily mean it had something to do with Engold's injury, certainly. No. But it was in that pileup. Looks like he's dragging his right leg a little sure bit, is. so it could be a knee. Yeah. I'm afraid it probably looks like a knee in this situation. And it looks like he is out for the rest of the year. This being the final game of the season. By the way, we have four minutes, 16 seconds left in the third quarter with the score 15 to 9 in favor of St. Lawrence. The Vikings in white. That's Mark Ingold being held, uh, held up. Keith Jasky, the quarterback, had been over talking with his coach. He's rejoining that huddle. They have Pat Kelleher, number 32, back in as a fullback. And in go limping badly as he's helped off the field. First and 10 at the 34 yard line. Well, I think we're going to take a look here and see if we can't spot it. It looks like a probably a piling on penalty, Vince. Looked like Mike Top 76. On the option, he's got nowhere to go and he's thrown for a loss back oh. at the 29 yard line. Keith Daxi, or Jasky rather, Bill Bear and Bill Hinsberger in there on the stop. Just a murderous defense. Boy. Was it the 34? They're now at the 29, second and 15. You know, it's not against the law to throw a forward pass, is it, when you're down 15 to 9? I think you're allowed to. <laughs> well, when you have a whole quarter to go, it's rushing things. <laughs> Neither team has put the ball in the air yet tonight in this championship game. Wing back to the right side. Play coming this way. But not for very long. That's Odom, wrapped up by Steve Earl. One of the problems, Vince, is that it's that wind chill is so so bitter on the hands out there that the, 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 the quarterback, the passer, whoever it may be, simply has a very difficult time yeah. controlling it. And they're afraid if they get an interception down here that St. Lawrence could move in for what could be a clinching touchdown. Well, sooner or later, they're going to have to put it in the air if they want to try to win, because I don't think they're going to be able to run the ball against the St. Lawrence defense. I would say that if they can uh, hold them here in this third quarter and keep possession, then they'll have to open up in the fourth period. And some switching in that defensive secondary. Well, look here. looking for the pass. Here it is. Now, slipped off his hands. Down. Slipped off yeah. his hands. They had done a little switching back there. Uh, Tim Reed, a cornerback, and uh, Jim Remis here. Well, this is the first pass. Let's, say, let's take a look at it. And you can see what happens to it. It just leaves these hands and goes to fluid. Now, now we on. know why they're not passing. to his hip, and he might be back. We're told that that injury to Mark Ingold uh, was to his hip, and that hopefully he might be back into the contest. Oh, so that that'd means be it good wasn't news. Yeah. Tim Reed is back uh, deep, anticipating this punt. Curtis, the punter. They did not have enough men up there, and now they wisely call time, or they would have had a delay of game penalty. They have too many men. Yeah. One man came in there to take up a blocking position in the backfield, and then another one sprinted in, and that made 12. Just one too many. That's good, Vince. Yeah. That's costly, though, yeah. here with them trailing in the last half play. Oh, yeah. They might need that time out a little later. Never know. Chuck Burrow was the extra man out there, and he's now back on the sideline just below us here in the west side of the field. Let's see if they might put a rush on here. Doesn't look like it, though. Well, he doesn't get very far back of that line of scrimmage. He almost got it. Very high short kick, and it takes a St. Lawrence bounce back around the 40-yard line of Glenbard West. <laughs> he only lines back about eight or nine yards behind that line of scrimmage. And they're not getting uh, they're not getting the best of the punting game tonight. They're losing in the field position game, yeah. and that means so much when you get two ball control teams. That again, there was Paul Flerick, number 84, who dug on there, got a hand on that. He had blocked one earlier. 
The St. Lawrence leading 15 to 9. Two minutes, 21 seconds left to play in this third quarter. There's the Glen Ellen coach, Bill Deshaun. He doesn't look too happy, and who can blame him? Here come the Vikes. Pete Grogan, the center, number 55, 212 pound junior. There's a good drive by Ernie Wolf, and he's going to break it. All the way to the 15 to 14 yard line. Ernie Wolf, 185 pound junior, the up man in that wishbone, and look at him fly. There's the low angle shot, just an initial opening through the right tackle spot or over the middle, and then he just lowers his head and says, Come take your best shot. This could be a giant touchdown, gentlemen, because with a 15 to 9 lead, only 150 remaining in the third quarter, a giant touchdown if they can push it on in. It was finally brought down by Kyle Bolberg, number 42. First and 10 at the 15 yard line of Glenbard. Bikes going to the left. Oh, that for last fumble. Recovered by Glenbard West, and look out. Here he goes. Oh! That is Chuck Birrell. He's got a convoy. With a convoy behind him at touchdown. Chuck Birrell picks up that fumble by Neil Rock. And Glenbard West suddenly. Just when it looked the worst. Here he is. 85 yards. It started at the 15. There it is. That was Steve Powell's that popped that ball loose, Fence. There's Bureau picking it up. He's got a convoy, number Camp 77. Campilo, number 83. Kelleher, they're going to protect him no matter what. Yep. <laughs> Some job, huh? This is Phil Smith. Oh, it hit the upright and came back. A missed extra point try. So, with a Would minute you and 22 seconds left, it is still tied. 15 to 15. It hit the upright and came back. Bob uh, Thomas knows how that feels. Yeah. Yeah, I believe it because we've touch. seen it happen. Let's take Here's one more look. Down. Suddenly, Neil Rourke has lost it. Well, this poor guy wanted to get it, but he got yeah. tripped up. Here comes Chuck Bureau. Well, that's all, that's all I need <laughs> a little cowboy. You know, Gallagher was just about ready to say, please hand it to yeah. me. <laughs> Stay with me, guys. <laughs> Here, you're looking at it from the end zone. That's right. You can advance the fumble, of course, in high school ball, and that's exactly what he did. 67-yard fumble. That's a 67-yard fumble recovery and touchdown for this gentleman, Chuck Bureau. Play covered only 85 yards. Remember, they had it down at the 15 oh, yard line. And it looked, you know, uh, yeah. it probably looked as bad then as any time in the game sure. for Glenbard West, and now it's tied. Here's Pete Cartwright coming forward for a low kickoff, fumbled momentarily, but three of the St. Lawrence Vikes <laughs> fall on it just to be <laughs> doggone sure. Boy, no, that kind of a pile, you don't know who your enemy is. Uh, <laughs> Mike Constant is in there. He oh. was not supposed to be in action because of a uh, Back injury. And how big will that extra point be that hit the crossbar and oh, came back? Oh, yeah. We'll just have to wait and see. Well, Bill Deshaun will probably say, well, oh, shucks, I didn't want to win by only one point. Maybe you get a half <laughs> point. You get a half point for hitting the bar. That's Bob Thomas. First and ten. Good drive in through the left side. That's Ernie Wolf. Didn't get very far, though, did he? Picked up about a yard and a half. Up to the 35. C.J. Oxley, strong safety, number 63 on the stop. Got about two yards. Here's Oxley, made that stop. 180-pound senior. Oh, C.J. Again, the up man is Ernie Wolf, and he doesn't go too far again. That Winbart West defense is stiffening now. Fellas like Mark Zentner, Joe Atria, number 72, Jeff Bureau, 75, Steve Pals, Andy Swen Gross, Chris Corrales. Vince, it's uh, really something to watch. They're starting to key on individual men, this uh, Burbank team. Uh, St. Lawrence has the ball, but you'll watch Steve Pals. He'll go in and tackle the quarterback O'Rourke on every play now. It's a good it's way to right stop to that left. option wishbone. And that's a good way to stop all of the action. The horn sounds, ending the third period. With the score still tied, St. Lawrence 15 
and Glenn Bard West 15 and we're coming down to the final 12 minutes Floyd thank you Vance you know the sponsors are happy to have been able to bring you these two days of high school tournament football on television they'd like to hear from you about our coverage your thoughts and comments will provide helpful information in the future for us just drop us a card or a letter Write to football, box 95, Chicago, Illinois, 60690. That's football, box 95, Chicago, Illinois, 60690. Vince, it's exciting. Yes, sir. Don't go away, my friends. Our thanks to our spotters again, Bill Pence, who is uh, working this game for Glenn Bard West Spotting, and Al uh, Rosenbaum, who is spotting us. Uh, the Vikings Ball Club of St. Lawrence. They asked if they could get a free commercial for their work, Vance. There are two eligible young men who are juniors down here. And good luck getting them available, they said. <laughs> Third down and six yards to go for St. Lawrence. Motion to the right. And to give to Wolf, and he is met immediately. What a fine defensive play. That was Chris Corrales, number 87. For Glenbard West. Wrapped him up right now. Forces a punting situation. You mean we have to give them a commercial after they gave us Pete Zero? <laughs> <laughs> Back to punt is Tom Bryant. Deep man John Kelleher. For Glenbard. Keller is going to let it bounce. At the 35 and touchdown by Steve Earl. It'll be first and 10 at the 35-yard line for Glenbard West. In the fourth quarter, our score, St. Lawrence 15, Glenbard West 15. Our coverage of the State High School Football Championships will continue after this. All right, it is first and 10 at the 35-yard line. Keith Jeske, the quarterback, a senior, playing his last game, of course. They have just brought in Matt Campillo from the defense to play in there as a right tackle. In lining up just two yards outside of him with a wing back on the left side and a pitch to play coming to our right and he's going to run out of room. That's Johnny Odom. Right in front of his uh, teammates on the bench brought down by free safety Tom Martinez a senior for St. Lawrence. Well, how many times in this state tournament events have we come into the fourth quarter not knowing which team is going to come okay. out of it? I think it's just uh, about every game except the very first one, wasn't it? That's right. This afternoon we had Joliet Catholic and Danville play a tight one. Last night it was Metamora and Geneseo. In the afternoon it was Gillespie and Fulton. Here it's second down and seven yards to go from the 38. Odom on the sweep left side. Good cut. Across the 40, 45 and almost to midfield and across it. Before Martinez brings him down. First and ten. A big play here by Johnny Odom. That's the man. This has basically been a right-handed offense tonight, Vince, but they brought Odom to the left this time. Made the cut at the right time. Number 79 you saw there, Steve Samborski, who pulled out to help lead that blocking. 185-pounder. First and 10 at the 49-yard line of St. Lawrence. Glenbard West trying to get in. Look at that. Quick opener. Inside the 35, Pat Kelleher brought down by Martinez and Tim Reed. Beautiful burst. There's Mr. Inside on this offense. There's Kelleher right through, just right off the center block, actually. Good crap. Splits the linebackers. Just fantastic offensive blocking there by that mm. line. They're really moving them out. Two consecutive plays here now. Oh, they look great. First and 10 at the 33-yard line of St. Lawrence. Glenn Bard West on the move. Almost juggled that one, didn't he? And he's hauled down. That's Johnny Odom. He's carrying that ball play. awfully loose out there. That he had time trouble getting play. the pitch. Uh, yeah. He really did. Almost lost it. That was Jerry Barnico. What a great defensive player he is. And you'll see him on this play. Uh, Odom, the, the indes the, not the indecision, but the trouble Odom had getting started. And Barnicle is right after him. He sure he, is. He started to cut and he saw Barnicle and then tried yeah. to escape, but it was too late. Barnicle, the senior, co captain, 190 pounds. Second down, 11 at the 34. Odom to the left. Good blocking. Got a hurt. Oh. Tries to throw the block and he slips as he started to make the cut and yeah. goes down at about the 32. Well, again, they're running into that icy patch over there, Vince. Better try the sweep to the right, huh? That's right. <laughs> Student Steve body. Pals yeah. is coming in now. And he's replacing Corrales. Well, this is third and nine. I suppose they consider this four down territory, so maybe they'll try to I would run. say so. 
Wing back, left side. Nowhere to go. Pat Keller. Well, and green and white jerseys there. What are you Kevin doing now? Basic. That's exactly what the quarterback is saying as he looks towards the bench. What do we do now? <laughs> Here it is again. Let's take a look at it. I don't know what it was designed for, but it got nowhere. They had an middle. unbalanced line to the right, yep. but uh, the blocking broke down completely. It may time. have been very much the same play that broke Kelleher loose because uh, he looked like he was looking for that opening in the middle. Well, now they have fourth down and nine, and uh, hmm. Let's see what they try. Fourth and nine. The ball at the 32-yard line of St. Lawrence. All of a sudden, the drive is stalled. Rolling right, throws it out of the hands of the intended receiver, Johnny Odom. Not a well-thrown pass. So St. Lawrence will take over first and 10 in their own 32. In the fourth quarter, the score is still St. Lawrence 15, Glenbard West 15. And our coverage of the State High School Football Championship will continue after this. Be sure to tune in in the middle of March when we'll be bringing you the final rounds of the boys IHSA basketball tournament on Channel 9. That's in March. Be sure to watch your local listings for dates and times. Vince? First and 10 at their own 32. St. Lawrence in a tied-up game. And the give from Neil Rourke goes to Ernie Wolf. Gets it to about the 35-yard line. Runs into Matt Campillo, number 77. Well, either the defensive end or a drop back off the line to a linebacking spot. 190 pounders. Picked up four yards, a second down and six. Gorka wide to the right side as they come out of the huddle. Takes the give. He's still got it on the option. And he is brought down reluctantly by Andy Swingaris. Neil Rourke holding on to it. It is first and ten. Pickup of about seven yards by Rourke. I like the way he runs that option. Well, he's the man that makes it go, Vince. Pals has been keying on him, but he didn't that time, and he got away. Somebody kind of brushed him out of there. Look out. One guy started to come in. Get on back. You have too many out there. Detmer tried to come in. Quick opener right up through the right guard spot. Gets it across the 45 to the 47 where Sean Carroll comes in to make or, uh, Carroll with the uh, ball. Stopped there by Chuck Bureau. He's been tough tonight, Bureau has. Now, Pat Kelleher comes in and uh, Corrales is out of there. Second down and five from the 47 yard line. That is Ernie Wolf. Somebody held on for dear life as he gets to the midfield stripe. Yet somebody was Joe Atria. It's going to be a tough play with 6.50 left in the game here, Vince. They've got a third and three situation. I'm sure they'll probably use power football. It's certainly up to Glenn Allen at this time to hold him. We got big Steve Earl in there. It's a tight end. He got it. Up man is Ernie Wolf. Found some daylight through the left side behind Huffman and Tedesco. Gets it to, into Glenbard West Territory at about the 47 or 48 yard line. First and 10. We now have six minutes, 26 seconds remaining to play in this football game that is all tied 15 15. Now Dave Gorka is in there. Number 81 comes out wide to the left side for the Vikings. Gives it to Wolf, and the big guy is in for a few more yards. They're now just grinding it out. Stop by Atria. Let's take another look at it. I don't think Wolf got it. It's hard. E wall, yeah, the big e -wall, line. Yeah, yeah, they fake to Wolf. That's yeah. what's good about that option because uh, you put it in the stomach of one man and take it out and then let that line do the job. Brogan, Huffman, Antonacci, mm. DeFerris, Tedesco. They sound like football players. <laughs> Oops. Oops. He slipped and fell as he was faking the give to Wolf. Lost his footing and went down. And Steve Pals made sure he stayed there. That's Good. Neil Rourke we're talking about, number 20. Very fortunate to hold on to the ball, Vince, in that yeah. situation. No wonder if Steve Pals took his picture to bed with him and I'd remember what he looks like <laughs> because he's sure keying on Rourke, the quarterback. 
Pals number 50 in green. Clock is running about five minutes and 15 seconds left to play. Wide receiver to the left side. It's third down and six at the 43 of Glenbard. There's Pals on Rourke. Yeah. With that. But the ball carrier is all the way down to the 30 yard line. Oxley making the stop on the up man, Ernie Wolf. Boy, he's picked up important yardage you can tonight. See Pals hit Rourke, but of course the play has already gone. developed and gone past. Yep. Well, it's a strategy they must have decided on. Uh, it remains to be seen whether it was a wise one. He was stopped by Johnny Kelleher and Oxley. At the 29-yard line, it is first and 10 for the Vikings of St. Lawrence. He's uh, got it under keeper. Now the pitch out and a sweep by Ewald. Out of bounds inside the 25-yard line. Run out of bounds by Al Smith. Let's take another look at it, Vince. And now, of course, the clock becomes a factor. 4.42. Good timing, isn't it? Yeah. And actually, There's Ewald. They have good pursuit on the play, but Ewald has enough speed to gain some yards. At 82, it's Marty Detmer who hit him. So now it's second and about, what, three or four? Second and five. And to give it to Ewald again. Fumble. Fumble. Fighting outside. Fumbles. Fumbles. Who's got it? Glenbard has it. That stops the Viking drive. Number 65. Andy Swengross. Recovering. Lenbard West with 435 left in the clock. First and 10 on its own, 23. And to score St. Lawrence 15, Lenbard West 15. Our coverage of the state high school football. All the news plus highlights of IHSA championship football with Marty McNeely, Roger Tremstra, and Lou Boudreau tonight at 10 o'clock here on WGN Television 9. Vince? Glenbard West needs a 77-yard drive to win the state championship. First and 10 at their own, 23. It's Takes the give. He's going to roll out. Look out. He is swapped back at the 16-yard line. Keith Jasky buried. He had three receivers downfield. But there was great coverage on all three of those receivers, Vince. Mike Top, 76. Kevin Basic, 92, with the guys who swarm in on him. Oh, yeah. They, they overwhelmed the uh, mm -hmm. offensive blockers, Vince. Nobody was open downfield, though. They were covered? Everybody was covered. Well, they had three men the down, thing. and they had four defenders out there. He did the wise thing, then. That's he right. football. Glenbard West has yet to fumble. Second down, 16, their own 17-yard line. And they're going to try to run it through that right side for short yardage. That's Johnny Odom, hit by number 73, Bill Hinsberger. Most of the time, the Vikings will play that five-man front, and they'll play the angle charge much of the time. You know what's happened here now, Vince? Because of that pass play in the sack, they put themselves in the hole, third and long yardage. Yeah. If they don't make the first down here, obviously they have to punt. With plenty of time on the clock, St. Lawrence may have excellent field position at midfield. They could well have. Clock is running. Just a little over three minutes left to play. Sweep to the right side. I'm really, I'm yes. really quite surprised they went for the pass on the first play. Pat Keller gets it out to about the 20 yard line and that's as far as he can go before co-captain Jerry Barnacle number 52 brings him down. Well in the past few series they've just been unable to move the ball on the ground really. Yeah, and, I know, uh, but, uh, St. Lawrence has tightened up. I thought they perhaps thought they could open him up a little yeah, bit. Yeah but you're now into the situation Floyd where you must consider the clock and the tie breaking sure. situation. Deep man is Tim Reed. The punter Dan Burtis. Because if there is a tie tonight, we, there is no tie, of course. We have a four-man state champion. Gets it away oh, and a beauty. Fine. Tim Reed back to his 40-yard line, up to the 45. And he is brought down just about at the 50-yard line by Steve Pals. Excellent punt. 30-yard total net. Much Dan Burtis here. He gets off a beauty. Boy, he couldn't do it at a better time. They really needed it here. Kept his head down, followed through. Ball traveled about 47 yards in the air. Yeah. Vince Lloyd will explain to everyone just a little later how that tie-breaking situation worked. Yes, we will. We may not have to. Two minutes, 15 seconds remaining to play. Man in motion to the left side. He gives to the up man, and he gets about two or three yards into Glenbard West territory at the 47-yard line. Ernie Wolf being stopped there by Mark uh, Campillo and Steve Pals. Short yardage on that one. Second down and eight. Clock is running. Less than two minutes to play. Dave Gorkett wide to the right side. They sh shift with three men over here in this left unbalanced. 
Fakes the give. He's got it in the option. Running out of room. Finally flips it. And it's out of bounds at about the 44-yard line. Johnny Ewald taking the pitch out from Rourke. Johnny Keller driving him out of bounds. Uh, here's the play again. As you can see, the quarterback assessing the situation as he goes along the line. He says, well, that option's dead. This option's dead. Let's try this one. But he had no place left to go. And then they took the sideline and used it. Uh, that's Steve Powell. Oh, right they, they really uh, can't afford to He's lose right. Steve Powell. He's no, getting sure. up now, but in obvious pain, obvious pain limping off the field. And boy, do they need him on defense. What a Steve. game he has played. Steve is a junior, 205 pounder. He was victimized on the one option play, but he really had no choice because he had no help on that one play earlier in the game. But he's been so effective tonight. I think we're going to have an overtime, gentlemen. They're down and four at the 44 yard line. He keeps it. Cuts inside beautifully. That's it. He is all the way to the 30, to the 25, and just shy of the 20-yard line. Mm. Great run by Neil Rourke on the option. Well, there's Powell's coming back in. He didn't stay out of the contest long. He's now coming back in. This is where they need a man like him. He cut right Ooh. between the defenders. C.J. Oxley. We've called his name many times tonight. The strong side safety finally made the stop. First and 10 at the 22-yard line of Glenbard West St. Lawrence with the ball. Flat over the left side, and he picks up some yardage inside the 15, and they are hitting and hitting hard. That's Ernie Wolf. One minute, six seconds. Clock is stopped. Buckley on the stop. Keller has come back in there now, replacing Pals defensively for Glenbard West. A minute and six seconds left to play. We are tied at 15. If St. Lawrence, which has fumbled four times and lost the ball three times, if they can avoid a fumble and they get the lead here, of course, then it's all over with. If they cannot score against Glenbard West, then we'll have a coin toss and we will have a team with a series of downs from the 10 yard line if they score or whether they <laughs> score or not then the other team gets the ball at the 10 yard line and they get a series of downs right better go fast and a chance <laughs> to either tie it or win it we may never get to that situation though clock will start with the snap of the ball Gives it to Wolf, and he runs into a swarm of green jerseys. Maybe got a yard. Everybody in there. Swin Gross is one. Pals is another. They had Pals on the sideline and had a conference oh. with him over there. They yeah. were patting him on the helmet saying, use your head. He's been keying on Rourke, the quarterback, going to him. But I think they're saying, if you see he doesn't have the ball, don't continue going to him. Well, they become so friendly. They're comparing notes. Here's Wolf. Fumble. And guess As he who tried to hand ball. off. As he tried to hand off to Wolf, it was fumbled. And that is the fourth time, the fifth time St. Lawrence has fumbled, and the fourth time Glenn Bard West has recovered. And that, that's a couple of fumble recover, recoveries for Chris Corrales. Yes. He started tonight in place of Detmer at defensive end. He has made two fumble recoveries. And you can almost be sure, gentlemen, now with 29 seconds on the clock, there will be an overtime. When Bart West has called time to stop the clock with 29 seconds remaining to play, tied at 15. I think they might be wise to let it run out. They have it at their own 14-yard line. Well, you might as well take one shot at it, Rick. Not Why not? Me. Not Why down not? there. <laughs> sure. Put it in the air. Yeah. Yeah. Keith Jasky has come over here to talk to his boss man. Now, if they, shot. if they do have the coin flip, uh, Vince, uh, yes. it's, it behooves a team to win the flip and and go on defense because they'd rather see the other team take the ball and see how they do first. To that's know. your philosophy, not that's mine. Right. That's my not philosophy. Mine. <laughs> win the flip and go on defense. Absolutely. I want to get that ball and I want to score on you mm -mm. and put you on the spot. No, no. The drive to the right side is all it's going to do is chew up time. Hinsberger making the stop on Johnny Odom. And there you can see the insert of the clock ticking away the final seconds. I think that's the temperature. Mm, 13, it will be, 12, but it gets down 12, a little bit lower. That's the way it's been going all day. Well, let Joe zero across there. <laughs> cheerleaders that may be the last play. The cheerleaders from Glen Bard are throwing little footballs with green stripes on them to fans in the audience. They all right. Like eggs. That's it. We have an overtime game. <laughs>
Well, I'll take that, Lou Boudreaux. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you something. Glenn Bard West had a lead in this game of nine to nothing. St. Lawrence came back and they had a lead of 15 to nine at halftime. And now Glenn Bard uh, West came back to tie it up. They just barely missed what would have been the winning point after touchdown try when the kick hit the uprights. And now here we are going into overtime with one team will uh, be taking possession of the ball at the 10 yard line. They'll have four tries to get some points on the board and then the opposition will have the same opportunity. Floyd speaking of Lou Boudreaux and team want to remind the people that all the news plus highlights of the IHSA championship football with Marty McNeely Roger Treemster and Lou Boudreaux tonight at 10 o'clock here on WGN television nine and there's drama and comedy on WGN presents tonight which will be right after the news and we hope it'll be at 1030 when George C. Scott and Diana Riggs star in the hospital 1030 tonight on WGN Television 9. Be sure and watch sports on WGN Channel 9 next Friday. The Bulls and the Celtics. The Chicago Bulls. 6.30 All is right. the time for that. The Chicago Dynamic Big Bulls. Big John Kerr making a comeback. Yep. Scotty May getting his so the John Kerr, legs. We may have to press him into duty if things don't get a little better. The officials out there are Lee Muir from Antioch, Illinois, Jim uh, Righeimer from Lincolnshire, Chuck Esposito from Des Plaines, and Norm Erickson from Libertyville. Advantage here would be to the St. Lawrence team. They've been able to move the ball on power situations and have been able to defend in short yardage. Well, there's Bill Dushan and Tom Cavanaugh, the coaches of each team in the center of the field. Tom Cavanaugh facing our cameras. Yeah, they receiving instructions. They did not have the privilege of the explanation by Vince Lloyd of what's going on. <laughs> well, they want to know what's going on. They're voting right now. These uh, ground rules are laid out very uh, clearly, as a matter of fact, in the uh, rule book for the Illinois High School Association. That's spelled out well. Now, now what, what we do not know, and I don't think we have access to the information right now, is. Charles. Oh, he's done a super job tonight. Both of these teams are just so well coached. Uh, it's a shame to see one of them have to lose in one like this. I suppose part of this decision, too, is on which goal you defend. Well, well no, the one who no, loses you, the toss does get to pick the goal. Right. Just as in the Whatever kickoff. goal you go to, the other team goes to the same goal. The action stays at that end of the field. I see. So that there is no particular advantage. What if you go to the locker room? And the other guy gets They'll there. follow you in there, too, <laughs> if you're not careful. Well, it's warmer there. You just go down there and try it. Let's bring a man out and get this going. Matter of fact, I want them to turn the heat off in this booth. They get one time out. Now we're going to have in the overtime plus whatever a toss of the coin. Two captains coming in for St. Lawrence. They are in the white. Coin toss. Well, St. Lawrence, we're told. St. Lawrence has won the toss. Well, Vince, they'll surely go on defense. No. We'll see. And you just saw the indication Glenn Barr chose the goal they're going to go after. Right, they put the ball down at the 10 yard line and uh, the team with the possession of the football has four downs or less. And we think Either they have get a field timeouts. goal or a touchdown. St. Lawrence we understand on defense will have yeah. three timeouts remaining. Glenn Bard West has two. Now St. Lawrence of course noted for its defense mm. and uh, that's that's what Tom Cavanaugh is putting his trust and faith in right now. Absolutely. Uh, like Steve Earl, Mike Topps, Bill Bear, Bill Hinsberger, Kevin Basic, Jerry Barnacle, Pete Stanley, Jim Ramirezma, because Jim you, Reed, Mike you, Kennedy, and uh, Tom Martinez. If you can't hold them here, Vince, then all you have to do is kick a field goal. And That's the game is about off. If you can do that. Glenn Bard West. And they send Detmer wide uh, to the right side, three or four yards. Gasky, the quarterback. An opening. He's got it to the right side. An opening. After flipping it out to Odom, and Odom is very, very close to so getting all the way. Well, that puts it, that puts the heat on. There was definitely a, a blocking wall out.
out there, and Odom made the right move to the outside to elude number 52, and he got down to about the two-yard line, about the one-yard line. About the one. About the one has oh. got about. So they've got three shots to punch it in from the one. That Student Dan body right. 33 comes in. Spalding is out in the backfield for Glenbard West. We're in overtime. That one will not get there. That's Kelleher. It's kind of interesting. They run the unbalanced line to the right, the short side of the field. Right. Well, they're probably a right-handed blocking team. And, and, and what I mean is yeah. they, they, they're they more accustomed to running right. Most teams are, and particularly in the high school or college level, for that matter. Well, most people are right-handed. They have it just at about the yard and a half line. Third down. Oh. Now, if they don't make it here, will they go for the three-point try and see if it'll hold up? The one thing you don't want to do here is jump too quickly. Yeah. And pick up the five-yard penalty. Third down at about a yard and a half to go. And they have to get some of the exuberant uh, people off the uh, end zone area. Uh-huh. Some, uh, some of them had encroached. I want to point out to you, St. Lawrence has yet to throw a pass. Glenn Bard West, which has possession here, I think has put the ball up at maybe twice. Here they are. Slack to the left side. Nowhere. Pat Keller stopped in his tracks. And Keith Dasky was looking, looking for the sideline. Over there to uh, Bill Deschamps. Say, what do you want now, coach? <laughs> <laughs> I think I might kick a field goal. This is Jerry Barnacle, 52, makes a stop. Whatever they do, they'll probably do it from a field goal uh, I don't think so. situation. I don't there. think so. Nope, nope. They're going to go nope, for it. They're going to go for it. I would guess the ball ought to wind up with Johnny Odom, number 22. That's a timeout by St. Lawrence. Uh -huh. Little psychological strategy. Defensive yeah. captain Jerry Barnacle has gotten his instruction. He's back in there. Uh, we have what? Another timeout? I guess they hadn't They're taken supposed the to take a minute and a half. Now they say we're all set to go. Well. They break that huddle. They have about a yard and a half to go. Here they come. Autumn. He did it. He's in there. We called it. Johnny Autumn. <laughs> Good running. Pat Keller helping to lead the way. 170 pound senior. They might be accustomed to running right, but they had to bring it left to the open side of the field, and that's Odom there. They had to spread them out. The only way they were going to The reason get it through. took so long is that they had to take a while for us to pass that note down to the press box. Here's a better look at it, another angle from the camera. This fellow has quick speed, and he cuts back, and he has good drive. They spread him out, and he bursts through. John Odom in for the touchdown, 6 0. Now, will they go for the two point play, or will they try to kick the extra point? Because around St. Lawrence, if they make it. Here he cuts. And he did not get in. Johnny Odom stopped inches shy by Mike Topps, number 76. And so St. Lawrence will gain possession now. They have four downs starting from the 10-yard line to try to get six points, which would tie it. Or if they can get the touchdown and a point after, they will be the 5A champions. Here's now the this, touchdown again. This is the touchdown, and, and he came to where he could at least see some daylight and then just call on his natural instinct to try to cut toward the goal line, which is exactly what he did. All right, the Vikings <laughs> up to the line of scrimmage. Well, there's what I don't like about these high school games is, Vince, that they're not exciting enough. Nobody gets emotionally involved. <laughs> He gives it to the up man, and that is Wolf, and Wolf gets about two and a half yards. So all the fans had run to the other end of the field yeah. because they didn't know the rules, and now they're all having to run back. Yeah, they thought it was all over with. They're probably happy for the opportunity to move around out there. Got Bureau, 75, Marty Detmer, 82, and in the stop, uh, Bernie Wolf. Well, second and eight. Wide receiver to the left side, but you can forget about that. He's just out there to draw a defender. Gives to Wolf again, and he's in there. A slant on the left side, and Ernie Wolf, the fullback, 185-pound junior, gets it in. It is now at least tied up momentarily. Here it is again. Powerful blocking. Powerful running. Yes, sir. <laughs> he shook him off. 
Don Keller the, had one shot at him, could not hold on. He's the young man who has come in as a substitute there in the well, fullback position. If he kicks the extra point, well. St. Lawrence is the victor. That's the advantage of being on defense first. Snap is good. The kick is up. And they it is good, and the St. Lawrence Vikings are the champions. Matt Opskinunas, O-S-K-I-E-L-U-N-A-S, a senior, 5'11", 170. Tom Breyer, the holder, and they have done it at a most dramatic overtime affair. St. Lawrence Vikings defeat Glenmard West by a final score of 22 to 21. Now let's take a look again. You talk about pressure, it was on. By the holder, puts it down. Here's Oscar Nunes coming forward. How about that, huh? Plenty of height, plenty of distance, and it is all over. And the plenty of pressure high. two events, we might add. The kid really delivered for them. Oh, yes. Here's the crowd that has already come out of that field. Just Here's Wolf. Moment. Wolf again on the touchdown that tied mm -hmm. the ball game up. He's a powerful runner. Doesn't weigh 200, but he is really a fine one. Now, low angle. Another angle on the same touchdown. Here he goes. The last That's guy hit blocking. number 83 Steph is Johnny Keller. That's power Oof. football. Boy. The center of the field is just mobbed now with the fans from St. Lawrence out congratulating their football players. Stroud, the Simpson Executive Secretary of IHSA, for the awards presentations. On behalf of the Illinois High School Association, Dr. Sergio, principal of Steinmetz High School and president of the board of directors of the Illinois High School Association, will make the trophy presentation to these two terrific teams that put on a great exhibition for us tonight. Dr. Sergio. Thank you, Liz. This last game has been a fitting climax to a terrific series out here. We want to compliment all 10 teams that appeared to, at the state playoffs the last two days. Every one of them should be proud, should feel proud of having been here. From Glenbard West, being second best in the state. There's no disgrace. Congratulations, Steve. We congratulate Coach Bill Dushan for a marvelous effort. Bill, we want to present you with these medallions to be presented to all the members of your squad. Captain Steve Powell.